everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to our uh, seventh, eighth? Seventh, eighth. We have lost track. We, we don't know where we are anymore. <laughs> but welcome. Yeah. We have done so many of these. We have subjected you to so many of these that we have lost count. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this week, we're, I can't, obviously, I'm like trying to get comfortable here. Um, we're talking about fake news. Yeah, fake news. Yeah. So before we get into uh, fake news, we should do the normal things, like tell people who we are. Again, if this is your first time tuning in. I am Beth Regan Shepherd, and I am Stephanie Eversard, and we are two of the librarians at the Marks Library at the University of South Alabama. Yeah, we should probably say that. Yeah, just in case this, just in is case like, this goes global. <laughs> it's only a matter of time, Beth. <laughs> Next thing we'll be inviting it like YouTube will be inviting us to like as like content influencers with all the cool people mm -hmm. like um, what's that guy who I love? Uh, oh God, I had a total like there we go. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, anyway. That guy. He sounds very God, influential. He's great. He's so <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm it's gonna come it's gonna come to me in the middle of the Just blurt it out. Yeah, I will. Okay. I will. He has he does great content. Anyway. We're still giving away a gift card too, right? Right, yeah. We're giving away Starbucks gift card. Five five bucks. Bucks, five, five dollar. So um <laughs> I think you were going to say five ducks. I don't know what I was gonna do. <laughs> I am so it's it's the eighth eighth week of the semester I think and we're feeling, I'm feeling it. it yeah I bet you guys are too uh, okay so that's the pleasantries yes. we just they were very pleasant this time <laughs> Casey Neistat that's his name <laughs> that's his name Casey Neistat you if you're watching this I want to be famous thank you <laughs> I love Casey Neistat if you're not watching Casey Neistat you should be I'm not so I think I, maybe I should be. Yeah, you should be. I should be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, super YouTuber. Okay, so um, fake news. All right, so today we're going to talk about fake news, and we're calling it fake news because that's a term that's been thrown around it's in, in the popular media right now. I yeah. feel like we hear it everywhere. Everything's fake news. But when you're fake news, I am not fake <laughs> news. I'm as real as they come. <laughs> Um, that's fake news. Yeah, totally. Yeah. What she just said, fake news. Fake news. When we're talking about <laughs> fake news, though, we're actually talking about evaluating the quality of the source. Yeah, which we as librarians talk about a All the lot. Time. Um, and I think uh, maybe we just quickly before we actually get into kind of how, how to do evaluating sources, um, I feel like some students sometimes think, and this is something that I deal with all the time, is it just because it's included in a library database or in the library that it's always, that the source doesn't need to be evaluated in any way? Not at all. Right. Like, so just, just literally 12 minutes ago, I was sitting on the reference desk and a student uh, chatted me about trying to find an author for um, just a citation that he had. And his issue was that he needed the author because his professor told him he couldn't use something without an author. Mm -hmm. Well, I found the author for the student, but in doing so, realized that the source was a juvenile publication on like the American West. So we're talking like 25 pages and this student was using it for a history course. Oh. And so while the source is not a bad source, it's not an appropriate source for the assignment, right? So just because, and the student was very confused, like why can't I use it? Because I found it in the library. Right. Well, so. if you find something in the library, you're going to find a lot less junk than if you use Google, so that kind of narrows down the yes. scope, but there's still a chance that you could find something that's inappropriate for your class. You could find something that's really old. Or um, if you're looking at newspaper stuff, you could potentially find an opinion piece, that's which right. is not necessarily a bad thing, and which we'll talk about, I think, more in a second, but that you need to be aware that there are some biases in play, right? And our databases do include popular sources, too. Yeah. So if you remember a few weeks ago, we talked about the difference between scholarly and popular sources. You're going to find some of that popular stuff, even if you do go through the library databases. Yeah. And I will say bias doesn't equal bad, but just be aware of it. That's right. Right? Okay. So back to, back to fake news. Back to fake news, which is why you're all here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, you're, so when we're talking about um, evaluating sources today, we're mostly talking about stuff that you're going to find on the wide interweb. Web. The interwebs. The yes. interwebs. The stuff that you're finding through Google or that's shared on your Facebook. Oh my God, your... Facebook. Facebook. Facebook's getting a lot of like heat now about 
the whole fake news thing. Right. Yeah. The way that its algorithms have been manipulated. Targeting certain populations, right. right? And outside of that, creating a bubble where people are just seeing things that they want to see. Yeah, so that was kind of a big deal recently with uh, kind of on the political spectrum, right. right? So during this recent election, I think fake news kind of got some traction. Um, librarians have been, we were so excited because we we're like, we've been saying this forever. Right. <laughs> like, we've been saying forever that you needed to evaluate your resource, like, sources, and now we're, like, getting some, like, legit prime time. <laughs> like, we're, 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 we're like, we're doing it! We're doing it! So, uh, yeah, we were excited. That's the one, yeah, we were excited about that. I think social media makes it really easy to share things because you can share something without even having to read it, let alone evaluate yes, it. Yes, yes. So I you can just look at a headline and you might not even see what the source, original source is. Yeah, there was is a at. really good one that came out right after the election that was like, um, it was obviously not true, but so many people shared it, but in the article actually ended up being about sharing news that wasn't oh, evaluated. Right. And I was like, this is the best article ever. And like I, I shared, it, that shared it with some friends and they were like, oh, Beth shared it. And they were like, wait a minute, a librarian shared that. It's gotta be like, and they read it and I was like, told you. Yes, I remember seeing gotcha. that one. And you would see people in the comments becoming yeah. outraged just at the headline. Yeah, and I was realizing, like, gotcha. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> So back to kind of the kind of sources we're talking about evaluating, right? Mm-hmm. Stuff, social media, stuff on the internet. Things that you find when you do a Google search. Stuff your mom shares with you. Stuff you get in an email from your, you know. Uncle. Uncle. Yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. Um, so these are things that are um, not usually coming through the library. Right. So you have to take special care to make sure to evaluate where they're coming from. So there are a few criteria that you can use. And we call it the crap the test. The crap test. Yeah, which we didn't make up. No. And but I wish I, I had. I actually think I do have the, I think it, this was the original crap test. Is it the original crap? You found the original yeah, I crap used, test. I used it in a class. I think this is the original crap I think crap it is test. the original yeah, one. Yeah, from Library. Yeah. California, California State University. Wow, taking it back. Yep. We will put a link in the comments to like a, description of the yes. like the we have a bunch of stuff today so we'll we'll link you to we'll all the resources yeah. yeah and i think there's a lib guide that's in the process of being built specifically about fake news so obviously i'm telling you it's getting enough play mm-hmm. to where like we're talking about it all right so shall we talk about the crap should test? we start with the scene crap the scene crap the scene- <laughs> I, I thought you said seeing crap. I'm like, yes, we are seeing a lot of crap. Yes, yeah, we're seeing a lot of crap. But the the C in crap. Well, first, let's tell them crap. It actually has two A's in it, so it's C R A A double A P. Yeah. All right. So the C in crap has to do with currency. Currency, right? Which is how new mm-hmm. something is. How recent it is. Yeah. So I'm trying to think of a bad example. Uh... One thing I see a lot are uh, celebrity deaths will pop up on Facebook. They'll say that someone who died like two or three years ago, it'll pop up and say, I don't know who died, who died a few years ago. Prince? Yeah. And it'll say, and people people will be sharing it and acting very sad over Prince's recent death. And then you click on the article and you see that it's from a year ago, two years ago. Well, Prince might be a very bad example, but they do recycle. Have you not seen them? They recycle on social media. And yes. People, and people will ex- re-express their grief. <laughs> <laughs> just want to be reminded that I'm sad that David Bowie died. <laughs> like, we will never stop being sad We will sad never be sorry David about Bowie. that. Okay. Well, well we now took, you have cast we, a we shadow. Took a, we took, I'm sorry, we took a moment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, currency. Um, some questions to ask kind of, so when was the information produced? Um... I think a good, a good example might be kind of the vaccine debate, which yes. is getting a lot, again, a lot of big news right now. Um, but if you're, there's an article published um, from, you know, six, seven years ago, there's been a whole lot of research um, on vaccines in those six and seven years. Right. So I wouldn't go spouting like you're building your entire argument, your anti-vax argument around an article published eight years ago. Right. And the same is going to be true for, um, uh, political stories, like if you're talking about like the effectiveness of a new policy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like how? If you have information from a decade ago, it's not going to be accurate. So, and and this does really depend on 
the kind of topic, but yes. generally stuff on the internet, you really do want the stuff, you want the most recent articles you can find. For sure. So currency is an easy one. Yeah. The next one. Check the date. Check the date on Check those the articles. Date. And sometimes if you can't find a date. That's a big red flag. Yeah. You can't, if they don't tell you when the thing was published, move along. Move on. Yeah. Okay, next one. Relevance, right? So this has to do with what <laughs> it kind of information you need. Right. Um, and so this is, again, going to change depending on the kind of topic that you're doing. Um, but you also want to think about the appropriateness of the level of the information. Like? So that's the example that you gave book, earlier. Right. right. So if you're doing research for a class, then for a college level class, you probably don't want a book that is targeted to preteens. 11 year olds. Oh. Tops. <laughs> <laughs> to children. <laughs> Tops. Um, so how would you think? How would you say that applies to like the issue of fake news? Fake news. Um, I don't know. Relevance is kind of tricky because it's fake news is designed in such a way to where it is relevant to the population that it's intended its intended right. audience, right? So that's a little. I feel like relevance is a little tricky for fake news. I feel like accuracy and purpose are really the ones that stand out. I do think one way that you can consider relevance yeah. is the importance of looking at multiple sources oh, yeah. before selecting one. Because often students will go with the very first thing they find. Not just students, everyone does this. So yeah. go with the, the information that's easiest yeah. instead of the information that's best. best. Um, Satisfa satisfice? Satisfice. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So you're looking for all kinds of information and not just the very first thing you find. That's a good point. And especially if it seems like it's too good to be true or it fits like your it just seems like it perfectly supports your point of view aka the news that shows up in my social media feed all the exactly. time that the government is forgiving student loan debt and i'm always like i know oh i know better fake news fake news fake news <laughs> <laughs> i'm always like Babe, no no <laughs> so if you find something and it does seem too good to be true or it, it fits into your worldview perfectly you're like aha this is just what i need to prove you know, that point that, that point. the government is controlling the weather. The weather. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then uh, keep looking. Keep looking. <laughs> yeah. Look, look for additional sources that fulfill the rest of these Maybe criteria. Maybe from NOAA, from the right. National Atmospheric and Oceanographic and Association. And that's actually a great oh, transition. That segue into authority? That does. The next letter, the first A, is authority. authority. So those are good examples. So if you're looking for something about um, how the government may or may not be influencing the climate, um, you would probably want to look for a source that is an authority on the topic. Right. So in this case, NOAA, right, which is the kind of the atmospheric and climate end of the U.S. government, right? They're the experts in weather and meteorology. Right. Um, a good example, I think that when it comes to like kind of the fake news, social media thing, is if one person is writing 400 different articles on all sorts of different topics for like an online news source, that's kind of a giveaway that that person cannot be an authority on healthcare, mm -hmm. climate change, vaccine, I mean like education. education. Yeah. I mean like how are you an expert on all of these things, right? Right, so look for the author who is this person? Just do a quick Google search. To and if find you, out more again, about them. if you can't find one, another kind of like, ooh. Red flag. Yeah. Hold on. Because trust me, academics want to put their name everywhere. Yeah. So, <laughs> if, if someone qualifies as their name, their name, jam, so their like, name will be plastered all over it. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you'll be able to read like one line and be like, oh, that's that person. Okay, got yeah. it. And they're at this institution, this is what they do. And they got their PhD from here. Right? You, you will know who they are. Know, you will know sure. what their qualifications are. Yeah. Um, what, are there, what are some other kind of questions when we talk about authority? Um, I, I think about whether they're qualified on that particular topic. Right. Because someone could have a PhD. But, in philosophy. Right. But be writing about climate change. And maybe they're very intelligent, but they're probably not very highly qualified to be writing on that particular Me, topic. Me, obviously, talking about mass spectrometry. Yes. Not it. You did have the centrifuge thing right. Yeah, but that's... I think there's a future. There's a future for you You think I have a medicine. scientific future? Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, so, okay, so like Beth is, is 
is a, a librarian. She has a master's in English and library science, so she's highly qualified to write oh, thanks, and talk about those subjects. But as you have learned, she probably is not highly qualified to talk about, I don't know, chemistry. Or even chemistry, in the, even chemistry research, right? right? Yeah, so yeah, for sure. And the same is true of me. Um, there are things that I specialize in that I'm very good at doing, but that doesn't mean I'm qualified for, <laughs> that I'm qualified for everything. Right. Um, so just because you see that, like, doctor so-and-so does not mean that they're qualified. Right. Uh, the good example of that, if you want to check it out, and it's, we might, I might try to remember to throw it in the comments, is a website called Space Doc. And it is a, um, just a regular old MD, but he likes to write about, like, um, science and space. So if you saw Space Doc, you might think, like, oh, this person holds a doctorate in physics, or, I don't know. Yeah, something related. Nope, just a regular old doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing against MDs, but it's just a really good website where you're kind of like, that makes you question the idea of authority, for sure. Okay, what's the next day? Okay, so the next day is accuracy. And this is where it gets kind of tricky. So I usually advise students to go back to the relevance where you're mm -hmm. looking at multiple, multiple sources. Yeah. So if you cannot find the same piece of information across multiple sources, or if they don't tell you where they yeah, got that. Yeah, I was about to say that's yeah. a big one, right? Yeah, they don't tell you where they got that information from. That's a pretty good sign that the information is. Or there are no like data points in right. anything right so you'll see like an article i'm trying to think of an example i don't know we'll go back to that we've got some examples here that oh good okay from. yeah yeah so um we brought in some examples all right so let's look at i don't know you want to look at girls? let's look at the google companion okay. nano chip all right. That sounds exciting. Yeah, this sounds exciting and frightening. All right, so, <laughs> Beth, I read this earlier today, and I'm really concerned. Apparently, they have invented a Google Companion Nano chip that will track your baby's life and will auto-post to social media pages. Well, I have friends that that would benefit that would make immensely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I hope it's not true. So, let's, I don't know, do you think this is accurate? No. No, I don't think so either. Because I'm pretty sure there's <laughs> privacy concerns for that. I, I was trying to I was trying to perform a little bit. <laughs> no. I don't. But, but so if we look at the article, who's the article written by? Do we even know? Uh, it says we do have a name here, Justin Birch. Oh. But we don't have anything about Justin Birch. Okay. Like where so we've got from. a byline. Yeah. Okay. And then we get all this information about this Google invention, but the only person who's accredited is Google's CEO. We don't actually. Do you even get named? We don't even get a name. No. It just says. He's got a name. What's his name? Um, so it says, says, says Google CEO. Yeah, I'm going to go with no. Um, and so we actually don't have, they're not telling us where they're getting this information from, except for this like vaguely referenced CEO. Yeah, I mean, even kind of like popular newsy websites will say if they're citing a study they'll at least say like a study conducted at Harvard blah, 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 University. Blah, blah. I mean, they right. will give you of course they're like you know real data from the study but they at least give you enough nugget so you can go back and find the study right, right? by the way this is fake fakey fake fake oh my friends will be really bummed uh, yeah. but I won't because I'm tired of seeing it on Facebook Oh, have you seen this one already? No, but oh. I've seen enough baby pictures on Facebook, <laughs> but I don't need anymore. Oh, I see what you're saying. I thought you would Yeah. <laughs> All right, so sorry to disappoint you um, would-be baby trackers. Oh, that's <laughs> terrifying. That is. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so um, we're on... The last one, P. Well, wait, but we, one more about... Um, uh, accuracy? Accuracy. Okay. And I think this is kind of more, like, kind of current fake newsy stuff. Also, it doesn't really fit into maybe authority and accuracy, right? Because mm -hmm. some publications have a reputation for being accurate and having authority, right? So, like, I'm thinking kind of in, in the news realm. So, there are a lot of long-running publications like New York Times, the Washington Post, right, that have a whole lot of credibility. Right. Um, and I actually have an example of that. Oh, look, here, look at her, all of her right, examples. So here is a headline that reads, Weasel, as in the, the animal, Weasel apparently shuts down world's most powerful particle collider. Oh, is that the one in um, the Hadron Collider? It is, yeah. 
So and that one's neat. Okay. And I believe that. That totally could happen. Okay, so it sounds pretty ridiculous, right? Just looking at yeah, because it's a weasel. Because it's a weasel, right? We don't really think of. Well, I bet weasels can be destructive. I imagine <laughs> that they can. They're be. like raccoons. But this is an example of um, an article that comes from a source that is known for its quality. Which is what NPR. Oh, National Public Radio. Right. Yeah, and so these people like. NPR, Washington Post, The Times, right? They have a standard of journalistic integrity. That and they, they have uphold. a reputation to maintain. Yeah. So these are, are sources that um, you can usually trust. Now, keep in mind that uh, even those sources do produce information rather quickly. Um, so if something is a breaking story or is a highly controversial story, it's a good idea to still double check. Fact check it, it yeah, man. Fact check it. Yeah. You can never go wrong with fact checking. They'll have to, they print retractions all the time. Yes. Yeah, as we all know, lately, following the news. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Uh, so what's the last one? Oh, last so the one, last one is purpose. Is purpose, and this is yeah. the fun one. We talk about bias a little bit. Yeah, so what are they trying to do? Yeah. What are they trying to accomplish with this article? And how overtly are they trying to do it? That's another thing, too, yes. right? So, like, um... We'll take the weasel. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> weasel <laughs> shuts down... Particle collider, right? Looking for the God particle. What we, as reading that article, right, we'd ask ourselves, like, why is NPR telling us this? They're just presenting us with information. Is it objective? They just want us to know that a weasel shut down the collider, or are they anti weasel? Right. Like, and, <laughs> and they are making it obvious that all weasels should be eradicated, right. exterminated <laughs> from the earth. Um, and so the language in it is probably going to be very anti weasel. Yes. And I'm glad you put <laughs> You pointed out the language. Pay very close attention to the kind of language that they use. Are they using objective terminology? Inflammatory? Or are they, yeah, are they using the kind of words that are designed to make people feel angry? Yeah. Like weasel hate. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of a silly example. But it's a silly <laughs> example, but one that is apolitical, it which is, is that, why yeah. I chose it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the tricky thing, isn't it? Um, and that's actually the political aspect of it has to be addressed. Yes. So when you're looking at this, and it does appear to be using inflammatory political language, it seems to clearly favor one side or the other. That's a pretty good sign that their bias is influencing the objectivity of the information. Does that, that make sense? That was really well stated, oh, well, Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Round of applause, <laughs> man. Killed it. Um, so I guess that goes back to that, is it too good to be true? Yeah, I mean, are you like... They're channeling my mind. Yeah. And if so, you might want to go like, oh. Hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, that is yeah, that's it. Somebody just one. somebody just shared with us a great A fantastic example. Which I use in class all the time. Yes, actually. I do too, actually. Oh boy. Um, yeah, so it's in the it's actually in um the comments now, and you guys can click on it for sure if you want to. But if you go to said website, you're going to find something well you're going to find something that on the surface looks like it could looks be, legit yeah it looks legitimate and even just the url yeah looks legitimate but after you do some reading you're going to start to feel like it, something doesn't miss? feel quite right and if you scroll all the way down to the bottom to see who the authority, who authority is. is right like who designed the website you're going to find it's a white supremacy. It's Stormfront. It's Stormfront, right? It's, Stormfront. it's a white supremacy group. Right. So, and then if you were a savvy student, which you would, and you didn't know what Stormfront, what Stormfront is, you just Google it, and you would very quickly find that they're not presenting objective information. They have an agenda, and a very clearly defined one. Right. And so that's going to very strongly influence the information that they're putting on this website. Yeah. And that's a good example, too, because a lot of students are instructed to look at the domain ending the, at the end of the URL. Yes, they tell you that um, like in high school, right? Yeah, but that's not always very reliable. Re right, because you can buy practically any ending that you want. Yeah. You can be a .org and or a technically Stormfront is an org. Right. Well, this says Martin Luther King .org. Yeah, but they're hiding it. Yeah. I mean, like, technically it's just, it Yeah, is. it is. It's an organization. So that doesn't really mean an awful lot. An awful lot anymore. Um... One that I run across that's a little bit more tricky, um, and this is not kind of fake news, but again, something that can be misleading for students, and I see it um, as the uh, librarian that deals with histories, um, is Holocaust denial kind of mm -hmm. journals. Um, and there are a ton of them out there, and they look, on first glance, really legit. 
Um, and it takes, again, kind of that deeper digging to figure out like, well, who, who is this person? You know, what university are they mm -hmm. associated with? Where do they, and you start to find very quickly that, oh, they're associated with Holocaust denial groups right. across the board, right? And so it takes a good bit. So things can be, I guess, obfuscated yeah. pretty oh, yes. easily. Yes, yes. And they can look really reliable. They can look very professional. Their websites yeah. can be very nice and they'll still be um, unreliable sources. Which kind of leads us to a little study that you shared with me today, which I thought was kind of cool yes. about, um, where was it conducted? California? Santa Barbara? Did I make that was up? Was it? I I think it was Santa Barbara. That's the one I didn't bring with me. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think so. And you shared it with me today. And it was, they asked uh, professional fact checkers, historians, and students, undergrads, right? Right. So look, look at two different websites that look very, that appear to be from similar groups. One of them was the uh, Academy of Pedi something? Pediatrics. And then the other was the, uh, oh, Academy. Yeah, the Academy of Pediatrics. The other was the College of Pediatrics. Okay. We'll put it in the. We'll put it in so right. you can see it. Um, Both of those sound like legit. They sound like they're they're uh, good authorities. Yeah. Right. What it turns out is that while the Academy of Pediatrics is indeed a reliable group of medical professionals, the College of Pediatric whatevers are is not. They're not as qualified. <laughs> um, <I'm> gentle. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're not qualified at all. Um, and and so the students had a great. They had a lot of difficulty. In fact, they preferred the College of Pediatrics site yeah, because they I, found it easier. Yeah, I thought it was interesting too. Like those researchers figured out that the students were reading the page um, vertically mm -hmm. rather than, I guess, linearly, meaning that they were looking at like continuity and design more than they were content. Right. Which is interesting. Yeah, so what Beth is talking about, like you can read something from top to bottom which is normally how we read stuff, or you can read it laterally, which is when you like, you're looking at the stuff inside the stuff. Yeah, so you, so see, you follow the link, or right. you open another tab to figure out who that person is. Right, so you, you Googled someone's name, or you see if that link actually leads to the study they say it leads to. Mm -hmm. um, or if they, one thing that fake news will do is they'll link within themselves. So yes. one story will link to another story, which links back. Back to the same story. Back to the same story, so it mm, looks like they have news links. News incest, yeah. That is a disgusting way of describing that, it's but true, it's, true. it's true. So if you're reading, don't lat judge me. <laughs> if you're reading laterally, then you're reading them all like side by side and not and comparing them, right? And not just looking at the article the itself. One instance. But the interesting thing about that study is the historians were not much better than wah, the students. <laughs> Sorry, historians, and they were doing the same thing though, right? right. They had the same issues, is looking kind of in the same. Things looked legit. Right. And we actually had a similar experience. We were playing a game called Factitious, which we'll link. It's really cool. It's actually where I got some of these articles from, where you have a chance to look at, don't, don't look don't look so sad. I got it wrong. <laughs> I got one wrong, too, when I was playing on my own. You it's got okay. it wrong, all right. Well, when you're looking at Factitious, they give you news articles, but you can only look at, you have to, like, make a special effort to yes. look at the rest of it. I got it wrong because I didn't want it to be true. And that goes back to this. That video. goes back to my own bias. <laughs> well, and also relevance. Yes. Right? Again, is it too good to be true? It's like, or in this case, too bad. Too to be, sad to be too, true. <laughs> too sad to be true. <laughs> so yeah, the fact this game is actually fun, and you should play it. Um, it's actually, I mean, three professional librarians were playing it, and one got it wrong. <laughs> some of them, some of them are quite some challenging. Them are hard. And I think it really demonstrates how how difficult it is. Yeah. Right. And that, yeah. And it's getting more and more complicated. For a long time, you could just look at a website, and if it had like flashing Comic Sans font, you or could be advertisements like, everywhere. Yeah. Or like a mouse that trailed, with like a rainbow trail. Or a MIDI song. Yeah. Right? You could be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. This, but now, now, some of the sites look really, really. Legitimate. Legitimate. Yeah. yeah. Like the one in the study that we were talking about. Okay, so that's the crap test, and we're we're running up on 30 Ooh, minutes. yikes. We have a lot to say about the crap Sorry, test. Sorry, everyone, this very important topic. <laughs> um, so if you have questions, be sure to ask a librarian, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a conversation that um, we have a lot, yes. a lot of students, um, and that we have a lot with kind of professionally with ourselves, too. And it's important to remember that it is hard to do. Yes. So it takes time. Don't take anything at face value. Take the time that, that is necessary to actually dig into these sources and see where this information is coming from. Right. 
Okay. Uh, all right. So, so we will not hold you here any longer unless anyone has, has any, has questions? any uh, questions. Think we're good. Yes. Okay. Um, same goes. We'll just leave you with the same things we always do. If you don't already like us on Facebook, like us so you can see all our awesome stuff that we're doing. Um, and all of our videos will be archived up in the video. So you can mm -hmm. go back and check out our previous lives if you want to. And we've covered some really cool, what we think cool. You, they're, oh, you they're think cool. cool topics. Um, what else? Oh, follow us on our other social medias, right? So we're on Twitter at USA underscore library and on Instagram at marks.library. She's way better at that than I am. So I'll <laughs> let her do that. Um, and, uh, next week, what are we doing next week? Um, well, next week is not Halloween yet, unfortunately. <laughs> Eventually, we're going to talk about Interlibrary and Loan. Eventually, we're going to talk about Interlibrary and Loan, and we're also Halloween. We're going to have the archivist here to talk about that. And we're going to be dressed up in costumes, so yes. I'm sure you tune in. All right, guys. Oh, happy homecoming week to all you Jags oh, yeah, out there. Yeah, that's Jag right. Nation. Go Jags. <laughs> and, uh, if you are not participating in any of the homecoming activities, make sure you check out the picture of all the homecoming activities that you posted yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Yeah, so get out there. Do some homecoming stuff. <laughs> Go Jags. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Totally. Um, I think there's like a button station, and I'm totally going to go make one. Oh, there's a button station? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Librarian's rule. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. And if you have any okay. ideas. I think oh. Sally asked, what is, what is the name? I guess she means the name of the test, the crap test. The crap test or the game? Oh, the game. Yeah, she must mean the game. Factitious. Factitious. F-A-C-T-I-C-I-O-U-S. -I -I yeah, we'll totally drop that in the comments. Yeah, it'll be there for you to find. Any other questions? Are we talking about CNN? No. We're talking We're about, talking all, about kinds all things. Of stuff. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Okay, the game. Yeah, okay, yeah, all okay. Right. So factitious, and we'll drop it in the comments. And really, no matter where something comes from, you should be yes. evaluating it. Like, just look at it, evaluate it, think about it. Even the New York Times, yeah. Even the Washington Post. All right, guys. All right. Well, it was fun, everyone, and we will see you next week. Bye bye.